It's, mon <coughs> it's Monday morning and not the best and most successful start to the week, but we should, we're going to turn it around. I actually woke up aching all over with a headache and decided it was because I did too much yesterday. But I did get a lot done, so maybe it's worth it. Uh, we painted the outside, the part of the outside of the house, mowed the lawn. In fact, somebody else mowed the lawn and broke the lawnmower, but that's another story. Anyway, I completely forgot that we're having solar heating installed this morning. The first thing I realised was Mike was out, the dogs. I was here, Sarah was in her room, and the plumbers arrived. Not the best start for the week. Anyway, there's a lot of noise or shuffling in the loft. I think the name of the boiler or the name of the water system or whatever it is that I've got in the in the workshop is very appropriate. Tempest. It seems like I'm in the middle of a whirlpool at the minute. So we'll just see how the day inf unfolds. I oh yes, and I've just had a phone from the harbour to say that the Salvation Army container which in which we put all the clothes is locked. Actually, they were looking in the wrong container which now has two mowers in it which belong to somebody else. So that's just another little thing to sort out. Yes, I just remembered we painted part of the inside of the house as well. We being me and a friend. One of the difficult things when you're not feeling 100% is cooking. So um, I've consulted my recipe books and um, we've decided on quiche Lorraine for lunch. So that's going to be my project for this morning. Um, I've been running up and down ladders trying to find, um, no not running, creeping up ladders trying to find the plumbers to give them a cup of tea and eventually found them on the roof which is a good sign seeing it's solar panels. <laughs> want to watch people making holes in my roof so I'll concentrate on my quiche Lorraine. It's a really useful dish when you don't have a great deal in the storm cupboard and you can't get out of your front drive because of the plumber's vans and on a little island like Alderney you can't ring up and get stuff delivered online or whatever so it's going to be quiche Lorraine tomorrow, today. <laughs> really, I really am not the full shilling at all so you'll have to bear with me. Light the oven, a good quarter of an hour before you're ready to put the dish in and set it to number 8 or 230 degrees centigrade. So I've got 300 grams of plain flour and half a teaspoonful of salt in here and I'm going to add 150 grams of butter um, and rub it all in so that'll be the next thing you see. Unfortunately our beautiful Aldi butter, they're out of stock at the minute, so we're on to French butter at the moment. Uh, it doesn't have the flavour of Alderney butter, but needs must. Right, that's the, come to the, got to the breadcrumb stage, that's the butter and rubbed into the flour and salt. And now I'm going to add 125, actually that's 135. 125 mils of water that's now 120 but I'll adjust that um, and knead it vigorously and then put it in the fridge for 20 minutes one of the good things about being ill is the fact that I'm I'm now on the go slow you can hear them drilling through the roof so stuff is happening even though I'm going slowly. I'm now frying up my onion in coconut oil. I went off frying completely for a long time, but actually coconut oil, I understand is really good for you and good for Alzheimer's, so that's brilliant for me. And 
I really like it. It also is very useful because I use it to take off my mascara. So, truly an all-round product. It also nourishes your eyelashes, my friend told me, so anything that nourishes my eyelashes would be good in my book. I need to mix in some cream in this recipe, but unfortunately my cream is wearing a fur coat, so that's had to go, but I have found some more in the back of my fridge, so it's not all bad. Oh my goodness, it's 11 o'clock. Don't know where the morning's gone. Keep cooking. Keep calm. Keep cooking. Right, next stage, uh, grate the cheese. I'm not sticking to the recipe I've got at all, as per usual. So, and a, and a lovely old grater I got from the um, Help the Aged shop. But that's brilliant. Um, so, that's all done, ready to go into the mix. Not doing too great this morning. Parmesan's also gone mouldy, but at least we've got cheddar. We've got 150 grams of cheddar, which I'm going to put in, um, which you've seen already, and add it to five eggs and 400 mils of a combination of cream and milk. I know this is a bit of cholesterol in here, but we don't have this very often, so why not? And we'll serve, I shall serve it with salad, and I'm going to put tomatoes on the top, so there we go. Just check the recipe to see how long it's going to take to cook, and it looks like an hour, so I'd better get my skates on, because it's now 11.15, and I'm going to do it in that plastic baking thing that I don't like very much, but is really useful when it comes to serving. So, I'm going to roll out my pastry between two sheets of baking, for baking paper, so that I don't stick to the workshop. And I'll show you in a minute where we've got to. Right, here's my pastry ready to roll. There's my baking parchment that I'm going to roll it into. And here is my flan tin greased. And I've remembered for once to put it onto a baking tray because if you try and lift that up with a liquid centre, that is a real recipe for disaster. So that's all ready to go. I'll show you again when I've got pastry rolled and the filling in. I've decided on another little peek because that is my pastry rolled out. I've rolled it between two sheets of baking paper so I don't get mess on the top and mine always looks like a map of Tasmania. I never have been able to roll it accurately but it's going to fit in there just fine. All looking good. I thought things were going too smoothly. If you noticed, I took the pastry off the tray to take to film, put this filling in, then had to put it back on the tray. That was not a pretty sight, and don't ask me how I did it. But I've got most of it in there. I've decorated with the tomatoes, added the onion, and um, we're hot to trot. I'll show you what I'm going to do with the rest of the pastry off cuts in a moment. Right, now I've got my pastry offcut, which again has turned out to be rather like Tasmania, and I'm going to spread it with bog roll. Sarah's GoPro camera now has got flour, um, pastry, with a slight dusting of bog roll on it. So here I have spread the pastry with the bog roll. I'm now going to roll it up, comme ça. As I say, it still looks like a map of Tasmania. It's really important, if you can, to get the bovril right to the edges, otherwise you're going to have bovril rolls that don't have any bovril in them, on the edges. And now, it's difficult if you're the camera person and the chef, cook, whatever, you're going to, I'm going to cut them like this. And now they stuck to the knife, which is a pain. To another knife. Right, and I'm going to put them on a tray. Kippy's waiting expectantly for manna from heaven. She knows me too well. There's a constant rain of bits and bobs it falls on her. I'm amazed she's not covered in flour. She usually is by this time, in my cookery. Right, I've got those cut now, and I'm going to put them on a tray. Voila! As you can see, it doesn't look anything like it is in the book, but I reckon it's going to 
taste really good. And here are the Marmite Rolls. And here's Kippy, ready and waiting. You're not going to be lucky this time, I'm afraid, but you might get a dog biscuit. Well, it's now 11 o'clock and I'm reflecting on a day which hasn't been the best, but has actually resulted in quite a lot of successes. We've got the solar heating panel started. The quiche Lorraine and the Marmite rolls went down the storm. There's nothing left to show for them. Um, I've just been editing. In fact, I've been editing all afternoon. And the one thing that I was doing, which was Freya the woodcarver for my channel, and which has caused me endless trouble for all kinds of reasons, has actually been completed and uploaded. Trova is snoring peacefully on my computer. Mike is in the bath and I have promised that I will do a vlog about him soon because he really is my rock and anchor. Sarah and I were really disappointed that we didn't get in the final seven of the Solvi competition but actually it's put us into contact with so many amazing people that there's a plus in itself. So at the end of the day, there's been success all round and I'm really, for, really looking forward to feeling better tomorrow and getting on with life. See you then.